All right, we've had a busy afternoon. We did a criminal sexual conduct preliminary examination with a child witness, which took us a couple of hours. We didn't live stream that for apparent reasons. We did deal with another matter and we're about to deal with the last scheduled matter of the day. And I'm gonna start over again. The title of the case is People versus Rosalind Ray Keenan. The allegation is that on or about May 16th in the village of White Pigeon, she did resist and obstruct a police officer and drive with a suspended driver's license. Resist and obstructing is a felony now. It's punishable by up to two years imprisonment. And driving suspended as a traffic matter, punishable by up to 93 days in jail and a fine of up to $500 carries two points on your driving record and requires that your license be suspended. Uh, someone who is identified as Rosalind Keenan is present and she wanted to explain more about that. We'll give her a chance to do that. But prosecuting attorney David Marvin is here and uh, he's representing the state. Uh, so let me ask you again, are you Rosalind Ray Keenan? I'm here on as a uh, city juris impropria persona, Rosalind hyphen Ray colon family of Keenan, comma beneficiary. Is this on record? Yes, everything has to be on the record, so it's all being recorded. Okay, I'm here on the special appearance, and I'm a free woman on the land. I'm here under fraud, menace, and duress. I am the private woman, Rosalind hyphen Ray colon. All right. Keenan, the all capital mentioned name is the only appellation given to me. Anytime I autograph is to be done in, in a certain manner that I have here, or it's forgery. Thank you. All right, I'll accept this. Thank you. All right, so I think we have the right person here. When she signed her bond, she signed it as Rosalind Ray Keenan beneficiary with quick bail bonds. All right, now we've got another issue. This is a felony charge. The first one is. The second one is under the motor vehicle code. And it requires that we have a preliminary examination or it requires that you're entitled to a preliminary examination. We had a pre-exam conference last week and you expressed at that time that you did not wish to have an attorney. You're here with you this morning without an attorney and we'll address that in a moment. You've been talking with Mr. Marvin. You have an absolute right to represent yourself. I normally don't recommend it. Mr. Marvin will sit down and talk with anybody, whether they're an attorney or whether they're a layperson. So you and he have been meeting to discuss this. Mr. Marvin, is there a plea offer here? There is, um, and I'll tell you about that. But I wanted to mention that this is, I believe the third time we've sat down and uh, so this is dragged out a bit, but only because she's not represented and um, in these three separate meetings um, and adjournments, the court has uh, allowed those and I appreciate it. Um, I have spent a lot of time with her and her son who's here, he's always been here and they're very honest and they're good intended. Thank you. Um, and I think that we've come to a resolution that I believe is fair uh, I've offered, I'm going to state, state it for the record and only time will tell if she's going to accept it in hopefully two seconds. But what I would do is offer an attempt resisting and obstructing and dismiss count two. And in, I would ask that the court set this for sentencing at a later date and I'd ask for six months. 
And if by that time there's no other incidents with law enforcement or any other reason to continue, I would dismiss this or at any time before that if I felt that it was necessary. And again, after um, working with her, I, I don't think this is the kind of thing that should be, um, I would hate to see this upstairs as her first felony. I think that she's uh, interested in a way of life that she's honestly trying to understand, but I think that um, partly to assist her, um, I've kind of hatched this plan and I've offered that. I have the feeling she's going to take it today, but if not, I've got my officer and we're ready for a prelim. He's offering to reduce the driving suspended charge. And he is offering to dismiss the felony charge and reduce it to a charge called attempted resisting obstructing a police officer. That's a misdemeanor. It's punishable by up to a year in jail and a fine of up to a thousand dollars. Do you understand that charge? No, I don't understand the nature and the cause of the charge. All right, Mr. Marvin, me. let's just do a prelim. I'm not gonna tap dance with her. You may be more sympathetic about this flat earth nonsense than I am. Uh, but if I'm going to have to argue about everything from who she is to what the charge is, it'd be easier to just put on the prelim. From the affidavit of probable cause, her conduct was outrageous with a capital O. And uh, so I'll give you one more opportunity, uh, Ms. Keenan. Uh, Mr. Marvin is agreeing to dismiss the driving suspended charge. The record shows your license is suspended from Indiana and you don't have a valid Michigan license. That's a benefit. It won't affect your driving privileges. Excuse uh, me? What did you say about the... It's a benefit. And no, this, before that, about the license. Um, he's dismissing it and it won't affect your driving privileges here or Michigan or Indiana if he dismisses that. Um, so he's offering to dismiss it. And that's a benefit. He is offering to reduce the felony charge to a misdemeanor. And that's attempted resisting and obstructing a police officer. Um, if you wish to do that, we can pursue it now. If you don't, we can take testimony. The officer's been waiting here for three hours. Um, what would you like to do? Are you asking me to take a plea? I'm asking you if you're willing to accept the prosecutor's plea offer. Well, I don't understand that. Mr. Please Marvin, please let's just it. put on a prelim. I'm serious. You are playing this. games. And first of all, I'm you don't. Trying to advance all to right, what stop. I'm here you don't interrupt the judge, whether you're a flat earther or not. I'm not flat earther. All right. Well, this crazy stuff you're saying, I've got very little patience for it. Um, you don't have an attorney, which concerns me. Uh, because these charges could result in your incarceration. I will appoint an attorney for you. All you got to do is tell me. Um, but you also have the absolute right to represent yourself. Um, so do you wish to represent yourself or would you like me to get an attorney to assist you with this? It's my right to appear for myself. It is. I don't think it would be a, a violation of your oath of office. To do what? To um, If you did your duty under the Constitution, because I'm seeking legal intent, not advice. Well, and do you I, want me to appoint an attorney for you? Would you like to represent yourself? So may I ask what jurisdiction is this civil or criminal? This is a criminal case, which points out the fact that you could use a lawyer if you can't tell the difference between a civil and a criminal case. A criminal case means you could go to jail, in this case, for up to two years. 
in a civil case, there's no possibility of jail. It's usually over money damages or other types of non-jail relief, like other types of non-jail relief. So yes, this is a criminal case. Well, thank you. So um, you said the record is on. Yes. Could the record of the court show that this is a criminal action? And my next question is, I know that the Constitution grants the court two types of criminal jurisdictions. One is criminal jurisdiction under common law, and the other is criminal jurisdiction under admiralty or military tribunal venue under Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17 of the Constitution. Under which of these two jurisdictions is the court intending to try me? This is statutory jurisdiction of the law of the state of Michigan. It's not any of those things, including the wacky admiralty uh, clause people try to invoke. This is criminal jurisdiction uh, authorized by the state legislature uh, here in the state of Michigan. Thank you. Well, please let the record of the court show that the court intends to conduct a criminal action against me under a statutory jurisdiction. But that makes me wonder, I have never heard of criminal action under statutory jurisdiction and there is no such jurisdiction established in the Constitution. And I will be able to proceed if you can show me where I can find the published rules of civil procedures under a statutory jurisdiction and where this nature, cause, and jurisdiction exists. It is crucial that I have the published rules of procedure so that I can conduct a fair defense and fair trial. Otherwise, this needs to be dismissed. And I would like it in writing, please. Uh, thank you. It's not thank civil you. procedure, it's criminal procedure. And the defendant doesn't come up and show court, tell me why I get to do this. You've been charged under the criminal statutes of the state of Michigan and I've just advised you of that on the record. I'm just trying to establish at this point whether you want to represent yourself or not. Uh, as I mentioned, the conduct in here and the affidavit or the bond information report is outrageous with a capital O. And you could very well go to jail for a substantial period of time. Mr. Marvin was trying to extend to you an opportunity to avoid that option, uh, but you're wasting all of our time with this stuff that doesn't have any legal merit. I'm offering to give you an attorney who can actually argue any legal merit or advise you or assist you in this regard. But we've had some white pigeon police officers here on overtime for several hours. They're still waiting uh, for you to decide what you wish to do. I haven't even gone over the first. Well, first of all, we had to establish who you were. That took much more time than it deserved. Secondly, I'm trying to determine whether you wish to have an attorney or not. Uh, again, you do have the right to represent yourself. You wish to but you've exhibited to me that you don't understand the law uh, and you're uh, at risk of being incarcerated uh, for this conduct. Um, so to further comment on Mr. Marvin's offer, um, if you pled to the charge of attempted resisting and obstructing a police officer. He offered to defer the sentence for six months and if there were no further problems to dismiss it, um, which is very generous based on the police report, bond information that I came with the file. Um, so um, what would you like to do here today? Do you wish to represent yourself? Thank you. I do. I know I can peer for myself. I'm competent and I am confident. Okay. All right. So the next question is, are please. you willing to accept Mr. Marvin's plea offer to plead to the misdemeanor charge? 
I wasn't completed with what I wanted to say to you, please. Okay. May I? Thank you. So I wanted to say that I don't believe it's a violation of your oath of office if you did your duty under the Constitution because I'm seeking legal intent. Okay, so I have the right to peer for myself in order to intelligently defend myself. I have to know the jurisdiction this court is operating under because the rules of civil procedure under common law jurisdiction are very different from the rules of civil procedure right, or, stop. or military stop. tribunal venue. Stop, stop, stop. We went through this before. I know. This is not civil it's procedure. It's the Sixth Amendment grants me the right to know the jurisdiction being applied. And I told you what it was. And it gives you the duty. All right, stop. If you interrupt me one more time, I'm going to find you in contempt and you're going to go to jail. Objection, please. All I right, please. Please. We're going sir, to talk about I, this tomorrow contempt. at three o'clock. I find that you're in contempt. You're I going to jail to right now. Contempt, and we sir. will. Well, you have been. I'm simply this matter trying is to adjourned exercise until tomorrow my at Sixth three Amendment o'clock. rights, please. So you can think about and it. We can go forward with jail. this right now, please. No, you're I, going to jail for 24 hours. Contempt. I know you don't wish to go to jail, but you certainly I have earned it. I will continue with this if you'll please let me finish. We'll talk about it tomorrow at three o'clock. And you will be more respectful to the court. I you can will provide the You citations. will not interrupt the court. Your citations are meaningless. I'm sorry. I so you can you. go you with the officer. I don't want to argue about it. Take I'm her out of here. We will address this tomorrow at Excuse three o'clock. Stand up and begin. No. no. I can't get her, her aspects because they're. They'll get them for you. You can give all the paperwork to him. Thank you. Mr. Marvin, I don't know what you've got tomorrow at three o'clock, and I don't know what I have, but we'll take another shot at this tomorrow. Justice takes time. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, and I don't think this was a fair trial. They haven't had a trial yet. It's a fair preliminary. They didn't even get there yet. Yep, absolutely. Okay, we're going to have to take another shot at this tomorrow. Okay, we're going to go over here, Ms. Keeman. Ms. Keeman. Yeah, I'll, I'll get all the property for you. I'll have to go right over here. Here, fill my pockets. Yep, I, I will get all the property from you, ma'am, and whatever property you want to release to your son, I'll be more than happy to. She's going into uh, custody for contempt. Okay, let's go this way. Let's watch out for this chair here. I'll see you there you go. Go ahead and watch your foot. There we go. So, uh, that's it. Then this court over. Yeah, we're done. Can I say something? Yes. Uh, I don't think that she was trying to be in contempt of court. She was trying to exercise a right. I think it was a misunderstanding of how to for her to be able to pronounce that. But, uh, well, I told her to stop, and she didn't stop. And she doesn't know what she's doing. She needs a lawyer, and she's going to contempt herself into 90 days if she doesn't be careful. So we'll address this tomorrow at 3 o'clock. And to whatever extent you're advising her on this stuff, you're not doing her any favors. Mr. Marvin gave her the sweetest deal where she could not have a charge on her record. And all she wants to do is argue about admiral. Uh, she needs uh, to have that I'll record still for that chart, that option still, if I talk to Mr. Marvin. I, yeah, I guess so. Well, you can't represent her as a lawyer. I know. But he could, yeah, he, Mr. Marvin wants this to be over with. I do too. All right. Thank you.